Hello and welcome to On the Sunny Side. I'm Sunny Grinneveld and here on F15 I interview every week people who are shaping the digital economy and who are using tech for good. This week's guest is a very special one, a good friend of mine, Petra Eman, who is the global lead for location-based augmented reality at Google. Petra, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you made it to On the Sunny Side. Oh, Sunny, thanks for the invite. I was really looking forward and glad that we found time to get started that now. Right, so let's start then. Um, first question, are you a morning or a night person? Night person. If uh, I gave you a time machine, you could go any place in this world at any time in history or in the future, where would you go? The future. And any specific moment? I think in probably the next hundred years, it will be interesting to see how the world is shaping, what, what will happen to autonomous driving, how we'll consume digital information, what will happen to our health and longevity. So yeah, I think uh, in hundred years, it's probably an exciting time to be at. What is, traveling back to the present, a question that is right now top of mind for you? Top of mind for me with people getting vaccined and more people returning to normal lives or sort of normal lives. I think this return back to work, the new normal is something that is top of my mind and I'm curious how that is going to turn out. What is success to you? Success is when um, aspiration meets achievement for me. If uh... I look at your career, you've really, you know, been driving uh, augmented reality forward um, and, uh, and are really at sort of the cutting edge of this. Why is augmented reality so important, so fascinating to you? It's fascinating for, for a bunch of reasons. I think predominantly it's that bridge between the real world, the unfiltered world that we see right now and the digital world. And I think that bridge is really powerful. It's very intuitive. It's globally understandable. It's rich in content. So actually you don't need instruction manuals anymore. Um, it's like a language that everybody speaks because um, everybody can understand it. So irrespectively what your mother tongue is, irrespectively whether you're illiterate or literate, people can understand it. And I find that very powerful. So it's like this, globally understandable language that I think is is very cool. Now, I mean, it, it is really also a, an incredibly fast growing field. I, I pulled up a report uh, preparing for this interview and I saw that just between 2020 and 2021, uh, there's been a 70% growth uh, of the market uh, around augmented reality, virtual reality. Um, what, uh, you know, what is driving it and and, and how come this is just growing so fast, particularly in this last uh, 12 months? Yeah, those numbers look uh, staggering indeed. Uh, and it's amazing to see those numbers. When, I, when we look deeper inside what's happening, I think it's probably less surprising because there are a bunch of um, prerequisites that are just are being ready right now and let me mention a few like we have better technology we have more devices we have more content so better technology and I mean both on the hardware and on the software side on the hardware side chip manufacturers build in AI capabilities into the smartphone chips um, along with a bunch of sensors and cameras that equip smartphones nowadays on the software side for better technology we have SLAM, so simultaneously localization and mapping that is just ubiquitous right now. Imagine 10 years ago, you couldn't have imagined to have SLAM technology on all the smartphones globally. So we have better technology, which is a great pre prerequisite to enable that steep growth. We have also more devices. And nowadays, AR, that is smartphone AR. So smartphones are, are important and just in 2020, Sunny, it was amazing. Over 1 billion smartphones have been sold. They're all AR capable. And um, if you roll back, um, if you think back, when was the first iPhone launched, the first Android phone? It was 2007, 2008, which I think 10 years ago, um, it, it wasn't 
so ubiquitous to reach people and have such a large user base that can use AR um, through smartphones. And then finally, content. We have uh, lots of content and apps there. And also prerequisites have been built three, four years ago. AR kits and AR um, core, those developer frameworks help um, developers to produce content way more easily. And so with that in mind, we have better technology, we have more devices, we have more content that obviously adds a lot of growth to the market. So you think we're just getting started? Yeah, uh, I think so. So the prerequisites, they are there. And um, so now is uh, an interesting time to develop further apps uh, and ecosystems on top. Super exciting. Which industries do you think uh, really stand to gain from it beyond the, the technology industry, of course, that is producing uh, this content that is creating uh, the hard and software, but, but beyond that, which industries really uh, offer the most exciting use cases? Uh, where do you think it's going to really uh, disrupt or at least uh, massively change uh, things? Hard to answer because I see potential for AR in lots of different industries ranging from just navigation, both pedestrian, but also driving navigation, to gaming, to commerce, to entertainment, but also in, in medicine, um, I think there's tremendous potential. Let me just give you a few examples. I recently sat in a car of uh, a friend and you could get all the driving instructions through AR. And I found that really powerful because you didn't have to interpret the map. Uh, obviously that became very or easier and easier nowadays, but it was uh, very nice to see. Um, commerce, for instance, you can try on shoes, makeup or whatnot through AR right now. And that obviously helps uh, shoppers in their shopper shopping decision what to buy or what not to buy. And then also think about medicine. That's probably a rather remote uh, area, but I think that has tremendous growth. We don't have to look so far. We both are in Switzerland and there is a Swiss unicorn mind maze um, based out of Lausanne that bring VR capabilities to patients in their neural rehabilitation. So in order to train their brains. So there are tremendous potential. And then obviously gaming, gaming in terms of industry size is just tremendous. Um, just think about Pokemon Go. It was, and it still is a huge success uh, generating billions of dollars. So there, there are a bunch of industries where I think AR has, has huge potential. I mean, the thing about Pokemon Go, um, it's actually uh, in my presentations, I oftentimes uh, use this slide. I think it took 19 days to get 50 million users. I don't even know where it's at right now, but it's sort of one of these things that's just like, uh, if, if that is in any way indicative of, of the potential um, and just of how fast also adoption can occur, uh, it, it, it's just incredible. Um, is there a, a use case particularly sort of for, I would say, the everyday person? Um, and I think many people haven't yet really properly even tried out augmented reality. Is there a use case that, you know, you'd recommend or that, you know, that's sort of where you can uh, try it uh, and, and get a sense of like, so, so what exactly is augmented reality? How is it different from virtual reality where you're completely, you know, uh, in, a, in a closed world in a way, um, disconnected from the, the real world? Um, is there anything you recommend there, particularly for first timers? Oh, absolutely, Sunny. I do recommend a few things here. So maybe briefly about AR and VR. So VR is really the thing that brings you into a different world. You're really emerging into another world. And AR is a technology that keeps you in the real world because you get just overlaid information on top of the real world. So it enriches your world. Um, and now to your question. So what would I recommend to, uh, to try out if you hadn't? So one of my favorite uh, features, and obviously I'm biased because I'm working on that, is actually live view. Um, so we are at Google, we are one of the few companies on the globe that can use utilitarian AR across the globe. And that means we have enabled outdoor navigation and discovery through AR globally. And also we're rolling that uh, also indoor. We have launched um, Zurich and Tokyo, a few select cities in the US right now where you can have indoor navigation. So let me give you a few examples. Imagine you're now that um, 
uh, we go back to a certain kind of normal. Imagine you go to the airport, you're late, you want to see where the next security check-in is, where the lounge is, and you can see or you can get you see where that is and you can get navigation to those through um, indoor live view which sits on google maps but also imagine you're in tokyo you want to see where the next atm is or a coin locker you can get instructions through that also with uh, indoor live view and um, outdoors obviously it's it's helpful as well so Imagine you just left the subway and uh, we all had those moments, those subway moments where we want to head to our appointment and we just think we know where to go and two blocks further away, we realize, oh crap, that was the wrong direction. So a live view outdoors helps to prevent those situations from happening again because instantly we can tell you where you should turn left or right um, so you can reach your destination super easily so for ar is like feeling like a local even though you're not one so if i want to use this feature uh so far i've in google maps just used the 2d layout how would i turn it on how would i how would i actually start to see an augmented reality as i navigate a city so when you open google maps you type in your destination and then uh, when you start the directions, on the bottom right, you will see a button, um, live view. So if you click on that, you can lift up your phone and all of a sudden you can see through the camera view, um, the real world. And we overlay arrows that tell you where you should turn right or left or go ahead on top of, of your screen. At Google, you are in charge of global product partnerships for augmented reality. Now. In doing that, what are some leadership principles that uh, really have helped you build and succeed at these uh, global product partnerships for augmented reality? That's an interesting question. I think at Google, we lead by convincing people, not by telling people what to do. So everybody has the opportunity to say, I have no bandwidth, um, or I think that project is not of interest to me. So we lead by trust and empathy instead of by hierarchical levels and that requires a different skill set so what worked out for me is leading through positivity through vision and through drive and let me give you a few examples of that so positivity is crucial to me it's you live and breathe what you want to do like augmented reality is a a deep passion for me and I think when you're passionate about it and you're convinced that this is changing the, the life of users to the better then it's easier to lead or think about like you go to a concert if the musician is so convinced that this music is adding so much value and power then it's easier to um, listen to it as uh, as a concert viewer um, and so this positivity is very important to me and also positivity in the sense not only that I am positive about what I do, but also that I'm cheering others on and lead by positive incentives. Then the other point that is important to me is vision. Vision in the sense that I like to think long term. So how does the technology I'm working on, the product I'm working on, impact lives going forward? How does the culture shift going forward? And so that, um, that the vision gives me sort of a purpose to it. So if positivity is like the fuel on the journey, then vision is just like having the destination in mind that motivates you to go there and not only motivates me, but also motivates others. And then third point, drive. I think drive is important and drive being spot on, being forward looking, being fast, but also drive in the sense that you got to deliver. <laughs> if you deliver, people respect and trust you as well. And so I think positivity, vision, drive, that's uh, leadership principles that are important to me. And Sunny, uh, there is an interesting fourth one that I just might add here which is reflect um i heard from a ceo he takes one hour per day time in his busy schedule to reflect to reflect what worked what didn't work what he wants to improve 
And I found that at the beginning quite hard as somebody who likes to go fast and deliver to just take a break and reflect to, to really slow down. But I found this I found this very powerful. So if you look at my calendar, you see every day, 30 minutes blocked, just reflection time. If someone has now uh, gotten just as excited as you are about augmented reality uh, and uh, wants to dive more deeply into understanding all of these opportunities, and then they seem to be so many, um, what are resources, uh, you know, be this a book, be this a podcast, uh, really anything, a blog, uh, that you recommend or that you find inspiring on the subject matter? Um, there are a bunch of them. I think two predominantly, if you want to get started on that, uh, Klaus uh, Schwab's uh, book on the fourth industrial revolution and how we can handle it, that has a dedicated chapter to immersive technologies, which I enjoyed reading, working in that field. Uh, I found that pretty profound and so would recommend you read up on that. And then Another one is an HBR article from Harvard professor Michael Porter, and it's about why every organization should have an AR strategy. So I think with those two, you have a pretty good uh, fundamental to um, yeah, ha have some insights into the industry and what's possible. What's a piece of advice in closing um, that you would give to someone who is a young leader uh, and uh, who wants to succeed uh, at, uh, at uh, leading within his or her organization um, through driving technological progress. Um, what are some things that you've learned on your path? You've had, and you're having such an incredible career. Um, I you know, didn't mention half of the things, uh, but uh, you, you know, you've studied uh, at ETH Zurich uh, in the field of engineering. You've been at Stanford, uh, you uh, were involved in a startup in Brazil, then you uh, joined Google, um, might be even skipping here one or two things, but you've had just such a fascinating career so far. You recently became a board member at one of the large uh, companies here in Switzerland. So it's just uh, such a fascinating path. And if a young person, you know, uh, looks at that and says, well, how do I do that? Um, what are, you know, what is some advice you might offer? If I look back, uh, I can very well remember a lecture of one of our professors at Stanford, who was, when he talked about career advice, and we asked him oftentimes about that, he once said, it's all about making yourself useful. So if you're useful to the organization, you add value, they won't get rid of you, never. <laughs> so one of the most important things he said is, make yourself useful. And now, if you're that young person who wants to enter tech, the question is, how do you make yourself useful in tech? And there are a bunch of angles how you can enter tech. You can enter tech as a software engineer coding those pro, uh, products. You can enter as a product manager designing those, um, developing those products and the vision to it. You can enter as a UX, uh, um, uh, as a UX uh, person and um, design them or become or join sales or business development or PR. So there are a bunch of angles how you can enter tech. And I think the biggest thing where you can make yourself useful is choose the path that excites you most. It doesn't have to be that you need to study um, computer science. It can, it can definitely be, um, but you need to be passionate about it because, and I'm saying that because tech is a, is a global industry and people can be hired from everywhere around the globe. That means competition is increasing and you really need to ensure, uh, or you really might want to ensure that you choose something where you're best at and where you, what you like. So I would recommend you to pick a field where you feel passionate about to invest time and efforts. For me, studying mechanical engineering, that was valuable um, because it gave me a good foundational understanding of both in my job now, but also in external roles. And But it doesn't meet, need to be that everyone should study mechanical engineering. Um, so, and then once you have your rucksack with your skills, I think then obviously a job doesn't come natural in tech. So it's about working your network, telling all your friends and uh, family what you like to do because that multiplies the views and perspectives 
where different opportunities lay and then just um, connect with people, be it uh, online or through um, events, reaching out pe to people on, on LinkedIn. Um, most of the people are more responsive than you might think. So I would recommend you to do that. And um, I'm recently, I recently listened to a podcast from Naval where he spoke about luck and how it impacts us. And we usually think about, well, luck. <laughs> Luck is something that we inherit, like, and, and some people don't. Um, but luck is also, it's not something that we cannot influence. I mean, we can stir up so many plates that one of the doors that we just knocked will open. And so I think um, the last piece of advice that I, I'd give you is increase your luck and uh, stir around as many plates as you can, and then something will happen. Petra, thank you so much for sharing this time with us and all of your wisdom and insights. I greatly appreciated it. So thanks just so much for taking the time to join the sunny side. Tony, thank you so much for the invite. I was really looking forward. It was uh, time in the making, so I'm really excited we had time to speak on those interesting topics right now. Thank you. So here on the sunny side, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you did, uh, do click subscribe to the F15 channel and I wish you all the best. See you soon on the sunny side.